Hi and welcome back to Glossboxed, my top 10 tech tips. Today we are going to look through my experience and what I think are the top most sought after automation skills. I'll be going through what I think are the most asked for skills when it comes to a technical tester's role, whether that's a software in developer, a test consultant, a QA analyst, anything that fits the bill of someone who is designed to test but testing with a technical background. So without further ado let's begin. Number 10. Programming languages. It's incredibly important that you have understanding of how to write code using an OOP programming language. When it comes to the field of technical testing, Java is probably the most commonly used, the most sparingly used OOP language. But it isn't the only one. Uh, it is closely followed by C Sharp and various other languages as well, scripting languages for example. Knowing an OOP language means that you understand various concepts, fundamental concepts such as inheritance, polymorphism and encapsulation. It's important that you have knowledge of an OOP language. It's usually the very first thing someone looks for when they try to judge how technical someone is in the field of technical testing. Number 9 IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It is effectively a front-end UI tool that is used to manage projects uh, written in various different types of code. Someone who has experience in the IDE gives the impression that they know how to manage projects, uh, they know how to use perhaps various different types of tricks to help with projects, uh, for instance using plugins. Uh, it gives the impression that you know how to debug code using debugger tools, uh, gives the impression that you know how to step through methods, look through methods, dig into a lot of detail. It's important that you have, at the very minimum, some experience with an IDE. Again, almost everyone goes with Eclipse purely because Eclipse is open source and it's free and it's readily available to anyone. IDEs such as IntelliJ, uh, they're not free, but um, IntelliJ has various things which, uh, which makes writing code just so much easier. Naturally, that comes as a cost. Another one, Selenium IDE, which probably can't be compared to the top three because it isn't a heavily uh, scripting friendly IDE but it has the fundamental concepts of recording and playing something back probably won't put you in the spotlight uh, if you kind of glorify Selenium IDE as your biggest IDE but it is better than nothing number eight testing frameworks testing technologies it's vitally important you have some experience whether that's commercial or personal for some testing frameworks such as JUnit or NUnit. The reason why is because it really helps someone to understand what level of understanding you have when it comes to using testing frameworks, uh, but in particular when it comes to using testing concepts such as using assertions, uh, checking for validity between a given result and an expected result. Technologies such as WebDriver, Cucumber, JBehave, they really help narrate your experience when it comes to using web technologies such as HTML or CSS. Naturally, you wouldn't be able to understand how to use WebDriver or Cucumber or JBehave, not strictly, if you don't also have an understanding of other web technologies. So having experience or, or forgetting experience, just having some knowledge of these testing frameworks and technologies also entails knowledge in other areas as well. Number seven methodologies. I personally can't remember seeing a CV without Agile software development on it. Agile is a method that is used to incrementally develop applications, uh, write tests, come up with designs, various things. It's a topic in itself really, it's something that can't be just broadly discussed. It wouldn't do it very justice if I just kind of briefly talked about it. 
uh, it is a concept uh, an entirely massive concept in itself but having these kind of methodologies under your belt shows that you have understanding on a non-functional level it shows that you have a, a broadened concept of taking on board new ideas the page object pattern for instance something I've covered it isn't something that's solidly set in stone but it is a pattern that once used uh, creates an incredibly easy to use framework for testing frameworks in particular so having methodologies and again this isn't an extensive list these are just kind of the most common examples so have methodologies uh, learn them uh, it's as easy as picking up a book and doing some reading number six scripting languages even today various various technical testers must have at least some basic understanding of a scripting language HTML CSS XML they go hand in hand when you're writing code for web driver uh, when you're trying to write step definitions for cucumber or jbehave BDD tools for instance uh, Ruby Python they can be used as a substitute for Java in various frameworks and that said scripting languages are incredibly easy to pick up as well uh, they they usually aren't very heavy to learn they don't have an insanely learning curve so make sure you've got some scripting language experience again doesn't have to be commercially as long as you've got it uh, through personal projects that'd be fine number five academic skills or academic qualifications now let me just point out this list of top 10 as always I don't do any list of top 10 from top being uh, the most non common to one being the most vital no my list are usually uh, just the top 10 that I think right so on the point of academic skills and qualifications all right let's face it not everyone has an academic qualification not everyone has a degree not everyone has an ISEP uh, you don't have to have a degree to do something you don't have to have an ISEP to do something this is just something that kind of looks good it just helps dress your other applications or, or rather it just helps you dress your other skills uh, it just makes things look a bit more polished I personally probably wouldn't give so much attention to qualifications and degrees uh, if you've worked in for instance uh, if I talk about myself I did my ISA probably well a long time ago now uh, and it really doesn't help me on my day-to-day -day job but if I were to go for an interview it's one of the first things that's looked at uh, it's kind of a I don't know I, I see it as a very funny kind of side of things um, but if I, if I were to put it this way it's good to have than to not have but in the long run probably not that very helpful but it is very dependent on, situ on your situation as well at the very least I would say do a nice uh, it doesn't take too long to pick up it's relatively straightforward it helps build a lot of fundamental concepts of testing in particular manual testing so yeah if you can do an ISEB uh, do it or similarly just uh, an ISQTB uh, is just as good number four testing skills okay so this is probably a no-brainer um, and I suppose anyone can say hold on testing skills isn't that pretty much everything in your top 10 no not necessarily so when I say testing skills I mean it's almost like saying your approach to how you do something when it comes to a field of testing so for instance automation when you do automations you've got to consider various things that you may not be able to automate uh, performance testing there are various things you can do performance testings on that you probably shouldn't for instance uh, if you want to, to automate logging into some kind of bank account you'd do that maybe on some kind of uh, candidate release environment some kind of test environment probably a local environment but you would not automate that on a live environment uh, why because automation on live envir environment is kind of frowned upon you're not supposed to automate against a live environment that's why you have many environments prior to your live environment so a really brief overview your usual concept is something along the lines of you have a local environment which where you're running code locally on top of that you might have a QA environment which is running on some server somewhere on some kind of Linux box on top of that you might have some kind of candidate release environment which may use configurations very closely map to the live configurations and that's it so one of the things about 
testing skills towards an automation environment would be not to run stuff on live because you just don't do it. Performance for instance, you would need to know various skills such as what are the upper limits of say performing some kind of task on some server. You would need to know what the peak points are, you would need to know what the breaking points are. The last thing you want to do is kind of shut down or burn out your client's servers. Manual testing, you need to have a good fundamental understanding of what kind of manual tests there are. For instance, if I were to give you a login form and you said to me uh, you log in using a password and a user account that exists and you try and log in using a password and username that doesn't exist and you don't go any further, that shows signs that you have missing knowledge and gaps in various types of manual testing. What about testing using some kind of uh, SQL injection tool? What about testing without providing any information at all? What about bypassing the front end altogether and just using maybe some kind of REST calls? There are various things uh, that kind of encapsulate in the field of testing within automation performance and manual and probably the other types as well such as penetration testing for instance, security testing. So it's important that you have a good understanding of the different type of testing skills you will need for different types of testing. Number three, operating system. Okay, this one's going to be brief. It's ideal you know how to use a Windows system. It's ideal you know how to use a Linux system. This kind of implies you know how to use the command line interfaces from two different operating systems and it just means you know how to use more than one system. Probably not too important, but uh, given in the world we live in, I'd say it's pretty difficult to have experience using an operating system where one of them isn't Windows or Linux. Number two, database skills. Okay, I'm going to be quite firm with this one. Hands down, you must have some experience with SQL. When it comes to OOP languages, you can probably falter a bit. You can have one or the other, maybe both, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, maybe have a lot of background knowledge. When it comes to various things like scripting languages, again, you can have one or other. Uh, with database skills, I personally think you must have SQL skills. Obviously, if whatever job you're trying to get into or whatever job you're trying to transcend to, if it requires database skills, SQL is the must have. SQL is almost the fundamental skill needed for any database management. I, I, I don't really know how much firmer I can be with it. Uh, Learn SQL, it's incredibly easy to pick up, it's incredibly important as well going forward. If, if you have any doubts, just look at the trends, just look up a few uh, job specs. More than likely you'll find SQLs on almost every single one where the job demands you have some kind of automation experience or performance testing experience or security testing experience. Number one, experience base. Okay, so not everyone will have this, but it's really good uh, to your advantage to have some experience, whether it's some commercial experience or just some kind of background knowledge experience in various areas of the software industry. For instance, uh, uh, knowing stuff about finances, so knowing how loans work, um, banking, knowing how, how mortgages work, games, knowing the different type of games, how games work. All of this uh, knowledge really helps when it comes to writing tests, when it comes to writing scripts, when it comes to identifying uh, plugs and potholes in code. As a manual tester, you, you should pick this up anyway. You should have this knowledge base. As any form of tester, you should have this knowledge base. Uh, whatever you're doing in your day in, day out, uh, this is the information that you just kind of pick up automatically. It's stuff you just kind of learn outside the world if you like. It probably sounds a little confusing why this would be important to having skills alongside say something like Java or HTML or SQL. Why is it important to have stuff like finance and banking? It just shows that you have understanding of how different applications work. No, it's not the same as saying alright I know how a loan works and I know it's got an interest rate and I know you need to pay it and I know if you don't pay the bank takes your house. No, no, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is you show understanding that you know how different type of applications work, what the different architectural layers possibly are, what different kind of technologies are possibly involved in seeing applications work from a front end, from a back end, from a middle tier perspective. 
and that's it for this video folks if you enjoyed my top 10 video then please subscribe and rate if you have any questions or top 10 video suggestions then please leave a comment below many thanks for watching until next time ciao